India's most sincere learning destination for classes 1 to 10. So over here, all the classes are 100% live and interactive classes. So whatever doubt you have and the confusion you have regarding the topic, you can ask anything in the classes only to the teacher and the teacher will explain everything in the classes right so secondly we give personalized attention to each and every student of our batches because our batches consist of maximum number of six students right so this two, uh, batches can be of one student uh, two student or it can be maximum number of six students can be present in our batches which help us to keep an eye on each and every student so that they can understand the all the concepts better and the student can ask any sort of questions regarding the topic they can interact uh, very easily in the classes right hi Mahavir how are you good afternoon beta okay so coming to the third thing okay so over here we have a very good dedicated academic mentor team who continuously track on the students progress and accordingly walk you will be able to take all the practice test and accordingly you can improve yourself for each and every subjects and all the topics and fourthly we have the subjective test also so before going to the school exam or the board exam you can go through the subjective test and uh, you can write down the answer. We have a very good team of teachers who will check those and they will give you the suggestion how to write the answer and accordingly you can improve yourself and we will be able to get good marks, right? So don't be late. Book a free trial class. Okay, so admission is going on for the new session. So these are our key features to experience all these features. Please book a free trial class and learn with us. So I guess uh, till now you have all subscribed our channel in YouTube. If not, please subscribe our channel on YouTube and press the bell icon uh, so that you will never miss any of the update of the upcoming sessions of SwiftLearn, right? So be with SwiftLearn and uh, learn with SwiftLearn. Please like, comment and share with all your friends and family members, right? Now let us move on to what is today's topic. As I have already said that today we will start with the CB ICSC topic of class 9th, which is the very first chapter of biology, that is introduction to biology. Okay, so what is biology according to you? Let me get some answer from you uh, in the chat box. What do you mean by biology? Or mainly we will study about what is biology, what do we actually study in biology? Okay, so before going to the different topics of biology, uh, like the photosynthesis, respiration, circulation, or you can see about all the detail of the inner uh, systems of any human being or any plants and animals or the outermost structure, you should know what biology is. That is very important, right? If you know about the actual importance of the subject, then you will be able to understand what is actually present within this subject. Right. So today mainly we will discuss about biology. What is biology? The introduction of it, the history of biology from when it has come into uh, like uh, 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 it has come uh, become a very famous subject and why we are so much concerned about this biology uh, subject. Then what are, who are the different scientists and what are the, their different discoveries about the biology and then we will study about the different fields of biology. Biology is not a, uh, just a subject. It has a lot of branches to study about. We will study all those things and also the importance of biology. Okay, so before going to the topic directly, let me show you one picture. So this is the picture. Now coming into this picture, can you please tell me what are, how is it looking like or what are the different things you can see in this picture or image and uh, how can you relate them to biology? Yes. Anyone in the chat box? Yes, Vidhi. Okay, so as you already know that after this, uh, at the end of the session, definitely who will be with us and who will give me most of the answer in the chat box and who will interact more, definitely he or she will be the student of the session and I will write his or her name on the screen, right? Okay, so let me see who can give me a uh, beautiful, like, uh, pictorial explanation of what you can see in this picture. Yes, we can see the various types of plants, right? We can see the various types of plants as well as the various types of animals. From here, we can say that this picture is all about a forest. 
yeah so whatever is present within a forest we can see uh, these are present in this picture right we can see the giraffe the different birds the different reptiles we can see the other different mammals like uh, tiger Mm, monkeys right we can see some reptiles like uh, chameleon we can say uh, crocodile we can say right the turtle is also there so the various types of animals we can see over the in this picture as well as the different types of plants the flowering plants as well as some of the plants which are very small grass like plants or ferns we can see in this picture right so who all are they can you tell me like whether we can classify them uh, as a living organism or a non living organism as you already know by now that what are the differences between the living things and the non living things right so living things have certain specific characteristic features which are not at all there in the non living things what are those characteristic features yes let me see who can give me most of the differences between the living things and the non living things in the chat box okay so uh, let me tell you some of the characteristic features which a living things can do but a non living thing cannot do those are we can grow yes being a, a living thing they can reproduce being a living thing they can eat or they have certain type of different processes of nutrition they have the different process of transportation whether it is a plant or an animal they have the different type uh, processes for excretion whether again in Uh, a plant or an animal right so all these different processes which are actually helping us for our survival they will all come under the living organisms right but these are the different processes which do not happen in case of the non living organism so if you think about a chair so chair is a non living thing why because the chair cannot grow the chair cannot reproduce can they yeah no right so one chair cannot come out from another chair right so they cannot grow also they cannot breathe they cannot um, uh, circulate or circulation does not take place within the chair because definitely if you break the handle of a chair blood will not come out right so um, and also the different types of genetic information which are carried from the parent to uh, the offspring these are also not there in the non living things so by these characteristic feature we can actually differentiate a living thing and a non living thing so why we are so much concerned about this living thing and the non living thing because we will mainly focus on the living things in this subject right so over here we can see that all those things which we have already seen in the previous picture they have life right and this is the only planet earth is the only planet where life exists right so survival of the living organism is not at all possible in any other planet in our solar system right so the life is teeming at in pre present in every corner of the uh, earth we can say whether it is the frozen arctic or the antarctic region or it is the very hot deserts like sahara or the third desert in india or we can th uh, say like the different rain forest where most of the living uh, organisms exist or we can find them right so these are the living organism who can stay in various types of situations by adapting themselves in the different climatic condition as well as the other different abiotic conditions right so the, all this biotic and the abiotic conditions are very much necessary for the survival of the species now whom we will consider this living organism they can be categorized into three main different uh, types or the groups right first of all will come the microorganisms which are the microorganisms uh, which we cannot see through our naked eyes we can see only under the microscope right and secondly all the living organisms uh, we can group them some of them under the plant kingdom and some of them under the animal kingdom so plants animals and microorganisms will together come under the living organism i guess this up to this much it is totally clear what is the difference between the living and the non living things and life is the only um, life is only possible on the earth and that is why we are so much concerned about the living organisms right so we are also the living organisms hai na okay so there are about 8.7 million species which are present till death which are found or discovered on the earth which are who are actually surviving on the earth right so whether it is the aerial plants or animals 
aerial animals we can see whether they are the terrestrial plants and animals or whether they are the aquatic plants and animals if we together make them a group it will uh, be more than about 8.7 million so over here you can see the various types of living organisms starting from the very small insects like the ant to the very large animals uh, it can be the giraffe or the elephant or starting from a very small grasses to the very long toe all coconut tree or the different palm tree right or we can see the various microorganisms are also coming under uh, under consideration in this group right or we can see uh, the various different um, living organisms which are actually present under the ocean right the beautiful corals the colorful corals we can see they are also coming under the living organisms fine so uh, let me uh, get some of the more ideas or more names of the living organism in the chat box uh, whether it is a plant or an animal please write down in the chat box what are like which are mostly uncommon to us okay so these all constitute the living organisms now earth is as i have already said it is the only planet where life is possible and living organisms can survive due to the different types of abiotic conditions also which help us for our survival as well as the different types of life processes continuously which are going on inside our body right now do you know there is a separate field for the study of all these living organisms yeah we have already uh, know got an idea about the different branches of the science right you already have an idea about the physics chemistry chemistry means all which is related to the uh, chemical properties or the chemical things of the different uh, matter we can say right the physics also is a different branch of science now there is also a different branch of science which actually help in the study of the living organisms only okay whether it is a microscopic or a very large one so what is the name of that study or what is the name of that branch of science it is the biology okay so biology is mainly defined as the study of the living organisms and their origin uh, from where they have originated their anatomy their morphology their physiology behavior and the whole distribution of all the living organism in the all over the world right now i would like to tell you about uh from where we can derive the word biology from so biology is a term which is a greek term okay which comes from the two greek words one is bios and another one is logos okay so bios means life and logos means study so from these two words we can say that uh biology has come which is the study of the living organisms okay so mainly the study of all the living organism all over the world will come under this branch of science fine so first let us uh, find some uh, history about the biology and then we will come to know the different branches of biology fine so before the term biology was adapted other terms were existed on earth ab about the study of the living organisms or we can say the study of the plants and animals so people who uh, study about those plants and animals those uh, people in the ancient day they uh, actually uh, tried to observe them and accordingly find the different characteristic features so at that time it was known as or specifically famous by the term natural history okay so this natural history actually explained about all the different animals plants fungi or all the other different types of life forms which are present in our environment fine and at that time definitely those were mostly observational but nowadays these are mostly the experimental field of science right so nowadays a lots of experiment is going on about the biology and the various branches uh, branches of biology as you already know now you will come to know about the different branches of biology and you will also know, come to know about what are your scopes if you are studying the biology uh, in the higher grades in the bsc msc or if you want to do the research about the biology a uh, lots and lots of scopes are there in the biology okay so i definitely will discuss all about them so um 
at that time in the ancient people who studied about these plants and animals they uh, call the uh, subject as the natural history and those person who study about those natural history were known as the uh, natural historian or naturalist okay so after that after uh, the shift from uh, from this observational to the experimental field of study it termed as a biology okay so the fir very first term uh, biology in the modern sense was introduced by uh, through the work of michael christoph hano in 1766 now after that there were the independently four more times this uh, work of biology has come into focus and uh, the different scientists worked on it and gave the uh, main focus of the biology as well as the different experimental values of the biology as well as the uh, hi anvesha how are you good afternoon okay so we will study about those names of the scientists those are very important scientists who gave a who had a lot of contribution in the field of biology they are thomas bidos in 1799 again explained what is biology then carl friedrich bodak that is on uh, 1800 uh, gottfried uh, reinhold treverenus in 1802 and you already know a very famous name who, who has a lot of contribution in the evolutionary history or evolution of the biology also that is jean baptist lamarck in 1802 so these scientists also gave the famous focus on the biology when uh, and after their work and the experimentation and the observational work biology has come into focus and it has become a famous branch of science fine now we will study more about some of the specific scientists who has a lot of importance who contributed a lot in the field of biology so coming to the very first uh, scientist who was aristotle he was known as the father of biology why he was known as the father of biology because he widely studied the natural world and examined uh, this uh, its origin uh, using the scientific insights and the systematic observations rather than connecting them into the uh, to the divine interference we can say okay now he was also known as the father of zoology because you already uh, see over here he was the first person who study about the different animals in a detailed way so he was also the first to uncover the relationship between the animals and establish a systematic classification of the animals and that is why he is also known as the father of zoology so as you already know that zoology is a branch of biology only which concerned about the studies of the animals right up to this much clear i guess yeah so this is more about a little bit history of the biology you have to know the names of the famous scientists please remember them and what are their contributions in the field of biology as well as who is known as the father of biology who is known as the father of zoology this types of question you will get for one mark or objective type of question you will get in your exam so this is very important please note down this uh, the names of the famous scientists test okay now coming to the second scientist who is known as the father of botany okay his name is theophrastus okay now do you know this theophrastus is a student of aristotle okay so father of biology or father of zoology was aristotle so just his student uh, was theophrastus who was known as the father of botany because he has a lot of contribution in the plant study of the plants okay so the two most famous book of theophrastus was inquiry into plants and on the causes of plants so in these two books he actually described about the very common plants which were uh, present or which were actually um present or uh, was there which were useful at that ancient time during his time okay and th about those plants he described everything and uh, took an attempt to cultivate the wild plants so this is all about the contribution of his studies of the plants in the study of biology right and that is why he was known as the father of botany so as you already know what is botany botany is the study of plants so jaise zoology is the study of animals botany is the study of plants and these two are the main famous branch or we can say main branches of biology okay up to this much clear i guess if you have any question any doubt please write it down in the chat box
okay now coming to third branch of science which is also very important because you know that biology has a lot of contribution in medicines okay in the medical line so who is known as the father of medicine hippocrates okay so hippocrates actually uh, was a greek uh, physician and he was known as the father of medicine because he studied a lot about the science of healing and treating the sick okay so at that uh, Uh, at that ancient time when he was there he studied a lot about the different types of diseases whether it is a pandemic or epidemic or endemic diseases uh, were there in the locality or at that time which were there in the different uh, throughout the world we can say and he started thinking about how to treat those diseases how uh, he can make the people survive properly by just discarding or treating those sick people okay so that is why he has a very important role in the medical line so that is why we know uh, call hippocrates as the father of medicine so up to this much clear okay now coming to the origin as a field of study so for the very first human knowledge about the plant and animal meant for the difference between like a life or death okay so as a result the cumulative knowledge about the species the be behavior and the anatomy were passed down for many generations and however the most significant development in biological knowledge came when human being transitioned from the hunters and foragers to farmers cultivating lands or cultivating the different crops perfecting the agricultural field so these are very important uh, shift we can see from the ancient time to the modern time and thus came to uh, know about the various uh, types of re research wars coming into this branch of science right okay anisha chalo so now we will study the different branches of biology so the most three important branches of biology as i have already mentioned that is botany zoology and physiology okay so botany means the study of the plant so whatever is present within the plant whether their structure whether their physiology whatever is present within the plant as well as the outside of the plant how they are reproducing how transportation takes place how photosynthesis takes place how transpiration takes place everything comes under the botany okay that is the study of the plant and what is the study of the animal that is known as the zoology okay so zoology means uh, how we are classifying all the animals into the different groups what are the different characteristic features of the animals how we can like uh, study the different uh, behavioral uh, issues like the behavior of the different animals how uh, they actually interact with each other these are all coming under the zoology isn't it very interesting yes so you will come to know about the zoology in details if you do a higher grade study about the zoology only and definitely same thing happen in case of the plant so the study of the plant is known as botany and study of the animals is known as the zoology now i have also mentioned a third branch of biology is also there that is the physiology so physiology uh, takes place in both plants and animals so what is that it actually concern about what are the different processes which are takes uh, which are present within the body within the living organism okay so these are mainly the three branches of biology now coming to other sub branches which we study generally when we uh, study the biology they are first of all anatomy okay so what do you mean by anatomy it is the study of the total gross structure of the living organism as seen in the dissection so as seen in the dissection means when you will see the internal organs whatever the structural organization of all the living organism is if you dissect the living organism think about the dissection of a cockroach or think about the dissection of a living organism like human being or a frog so whatever is present within the body the study of that will come under the anatomy okay so the internal structure and the study of those internal structure is coming under the anatomy now coming to the physiology what is physiology it is the study of the functions and the activities of the living organism so how the different life processes are going on inside our body so how circulation takes place how excretion takes place how digestion takes place how respiration takes place these will come under the physiology so physiology is the study of 
all the different functions which are taking place not only within the living or uh, not only within the human being but also all the living organism whether it is a very small bacteria or uh, like the different plants or all the different animals which are present on our earth fine so i guess this much is clear to you now let us move on to an other branches coming to the biotechnology it has a lot of contribution now in science as you already know that the application based biology which is there uh, the biological process is combined with the technology this is very important and a lot of research is going on in, all over the world about the biotechnology uh, for example the brewing or uh, so, for example the uh, baking of the bread so this will all how the microorganisms are interacting with the different types of technology everything will come under this biotechnology so we have a lot of scope about the study of the biotechnology and definitely have a scope of uh, doing a lot of research about this branch of science so uh, this is also very important keep it in mind coming to the microbiology that is also very important because nowadays microorganisms are used all in a lot of different types of field so the study of this microorganism and their you says how we are using them for making the different antibiotics or making the different types of uh, food items like idli dosa or we can say like the curd and also how um, they are affecting our health by causing the various types of diseases so we know uh, we have to know about the total structure and the function or whatever is going on the chemical reactions which are going on within the body of the microorganism right so think about the coronavirus nowadays so we should also uh, we should know first about the behavioral uh, things of the coronavirus how they are moving uh, how they are spreading from one person to another how they are behaving in the living organism so we have to know about them so definitely it will also come under the microbiology because we cannot see the coronavirus right can we see them no so we have to know about them the study of this type of microorganism whether it is a virus or fungi or the algae or the bacteria will come under the study of the microbiology and we will be able to study over here about their usefulness how they are useful to us by making the various types of medicines also like the antibiotics as well as how they are they can cause the various types of diseases in both plants and animals so this all concern about the uh, study of microbiology clear hai eh? up to this much any question okay now coming to evolution what is evolution the study of the origin and the descendant of the living organism so how the life was before in the ancient times and how uh, the different organisms are come uh, changing time by time definitely it will take thousands and thousands of years and all the physiological uh, things the structure the function everything are changing over here like for uh, taking one um example like uh, we can say the vermiform appendix which uh, we also have in our body right it is non functional but the descendant our descendants have uh, our ancestors have some function in digestion uh, which was there about the appendix okay so how they are becoming non functional and how they are uh, becoming modern and what are the uh, again what can be there in future everything will come under this study of the evolution okay so this is the again another very important branch of science coming to the ecology so what is ecology it is the study of the relationship of the living organism or the organism with the biotic and the abiotic factor which is again a very important uh, branch of science as well as it has a lot of research in the biology so what is ecology it is actually how we are interacting with each other we are not at all uh, like uh, independent that we can survive alone if there is no air we cannot survive if there is no water we, we will not be able to survive rather we are also dependent upon other living organisms so how we are depending upon each other how we are interacting uh, with each other both the biotic and the abiotic factors i guess you already have an idea about biotic and abiotic factors right biotic means which include all the living 
things and uh, biotic factors means which um, only include the non living things like the air water sand uh, temperature climate everything will come under the abiotic factors so both of them should exist together and they should also uh, be in a particular percentage or we can say they should be in a particular normal uh, level so that it will help us to survive on the earth right so this is all about the study of the ecology that is the relationship or we can say the interaction or we can say how we are depending upon each other right so up to this much it is clear i guess if you have any question please ask me okay now coming to the genetics you must have uh, known about genetics you have the study of genetics which you will study in detail from class 10th right i am uh, telling in both uh, uh, icsc board as well as the cbsc board right so you will study the basic of the genetics in class 10th so what is actually this it is the study of all the characteristic features which are transmitting or transferring from the previous generation to the next generation what are the different characteristic features we are getting from our parents right so sometimes people say that we look like our uh, your eyes are uh, like your mother or your hair texture is like your father or your habits or the nature is like your father hai na or your face cutting is like your mother right why it is happening so because the different genes are transmitting right the dna which are carrying the different genes that is the genetic informations are coming from the previous generation to the next generation and this is a very interesting field of study which comes under the genetics clear eh? up to this much any question please ask me if you have any doubt right now coming to the immunology so we are also very much concerned as well as very much uh, like uh what is acquainted we can see or a uh, very common word immunity is coming in our daily life nowadays right so we have to boost our immunity power so that we can fight out the corona virus this type of things we hear from here and there right so what is that immune power immune power means the resistant power that means you how much your body is trying to fight out any sort of uh, harmful li uh, harmful living organism or the microorganism like the if the corona virus attack me or if it enters inside our body our body should also uh, like produce something that is the antibodies we should have a basic immune system which can fight out those types of viruses right so the study of all this immune system will come under the immunology and it is also a very wide branch of biology where a lot of research is going on so if you want to do the research about it definitely i will tell you to go for immunology because a lot of, um, when the like time is going on and a lot of different different types of diseases are coming most of them are uh, because of the various types of bacteria virus fungi and the other different microorganism or the other different uh, things also the dietary issues or something like that so the study how, uh, of this immune system how your body will react against them will come under this immunology right hi avilash how are you okay clear concept thank you very good now coming to the next one okay eugenics what is eugenics it is the science that aims to improve the human race okay through a very controlled uh, heredity and we can say like it generally aimed at the improving the genetic composition of the human race so that we can survive a lot more time uh, by selectively mating people with a uh, specific desirable hereditary traits we can say so this uh, will all come under the eugenics right so generally this is also uh, concerned mostly about the genetics how the dna and rna is going from one uh, person to another from one generation to another and what are the different traits which are passing to the next generation and how we can improve them so that the survival together will become very easy fine now coming to the next one that is that is parasitology what do you mean by parasitology it is the study of parasite very simple 
okay so what are the different types of parasites so parasites are those who uh, can enter in our body and feed on our nutrition or our blood but they will not actually harm us like for example we can say over here in the picture we can see the lice right who are um, feeding on the blood on our head sometimes present in the hair or hair and but they actually do not kill us or we can say the mosquitoes right the mosquitoes if they, they do not carry the germs of the chikungunya or um, dengue or malaria if they just simple the normal mosquito come and feed on our blood they will not actually harm us but they are dependent on our body for their nutrition right so these will come under the they are actually known as the parasites and the study of all these parasites there are a lots and lots of parasites you know um the various types of worms mainly the different insects worms and other different ticks and mites will come under this who are dependent on other host bodies for their nutrition and the study and their uh, of their whole bodily form the structure function how they are dependent on us so the study of all these things will come under the parasitology clear hai now let us move on to another branch that is the pathology what do you mean by pathology you also find this pathological department when you go to the hospitals right yes so what is pathology it is the study of the different diseases whether the diseases of the plants or the animals they will all come under the pathology fine so various types of diseases their treatment how to care uh, treat them or how to cure them and the different medicines which will be uh, used for treating them will all come under the pathology clear now coming to the paleontology so from here you can uh, uh, guess that what is paleontology that means the study of the history or we can say the study of the different plants and animals which were present before in the ancient time so the study of the fossils mainly is known as the paleontology clear now coming to the taxonomy again the taxonomy is a very important branch of science branch of biology over here what happen we give the different names we group them all the different plants and animals are grouped in the different uh, under the different phylum or the different classes and this classification together will come under the taxonomy so if all the different plants and animals come into um, like is there and if you don't have uh, a proper characteristic feature to put them in, into the different groups so we will not be able to understand that which one is a reptile which one is uh, amphibian which one is uh, a fish which one is a mammal we will not be able to classify right so we have to classify them into different groups and then only we will know, be able to uh, find out their characteristic features which are in common and we will be able to further go uh, by the study of them right so this will all come under taxonomy so these are the different levels of taxonomy uh, taxonomy starting from the very beginning is the kingdom then coming to uh, the next one is the phylum then the class order family genus and species so genus and species generally comes under the scientific name if we say that homo sapiens is the scientific name of human being so homo is the uh, genus and the species is the homo sapiens sapiens is the species right so generally genus and species name uh, we use them in the scientific name but they are also considered under the different family order class phylum and the kingdom the most two uh, important kingdom is the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom we will study about them so this study will under uh, will come under the taxonomy then coming to the embryology very important again we should know what are the different development how the development is taking place how the formation of the eyes the ears the heart the lungs or all the different organs are coming when we are we were in the embryonic stage right so this embryology is the study of the formation and the development of the embryo of both the plants and animals so when we were there before birth within the womb of our mother the in the we can see the growth of the uh, embryo takes place within the wall of the uterus right within the womb of the mother so how the development taking uh, are taking place how the cell division helps in the formation of the various tissues how the different tissues are forming and how uh, definitely why our hand is not coming out from here or our legs is no, uh, legs are not coming out from our head portion why they are having a specific specific region for coming out this is very interesting to know 
Hi, Menakshi. How are you? So this all formation and the development of all the living organ, uh, all the different organs of our body will come under the embryology. Right. So this is again another branch of biology. Coming to the next one, that is cytology. You already uh, have an idea about cell. You have already studied about the cell and the different parts which are present within the cell, the different cellular organelles. So all the structure and function of the cellular organelles and the together of the cell will come under the cytology. Coming to the histology, so when a group of cell together perform a specific function, we call them as the tissue. Right. So this study of the different tissues will uh, is known as the histology. So over here you can see the different cells. Uh, you can see the purple colored things which are the nucleus and the pink colored things which are the cells. Right. So when a group of cells are forming, performing a specific function, they make up a tissue. And how the tissues are growing to form an organ, or they are combining with each other to form the organ. And what are the specific things which are present? Uh, the specific characteristic features which are present within the tissue which uh, will all come under this histology. So to study the histology this is very important. We should also see everything under the microscope because the cells as you already know these are the microscopic. We cannot see uh, the cell if not an egg cell definitely. So other than the egg uh, of your like um, hen or we can say the ostrich egg or the eggs of the different uh, animals we can see uh, we cannot see the other cells or the bodily cells without the microscope so this cytology and histology are very important uh, branches of biology to know about the cells and uh, tissues which where we will study all of them under the microscope Coming to the other interesting branches, biogeography. What do you mean by biogeography? From the uh, name only, you will be able to understand bio means the living plants and animals and geography means the geography, something related to geography, right? So from, uh, I'm giving you one trick to uh, like remember all these words. If you get one, one, one more question, what is biogeography? What is anatomy? What is morphology? So uh, you will be able to write it on your own words because from the word only you, will, you are getting an idea that biogeography means the study of the geographical distribution of all the plants and animals. What are the different plants and animals which are present in the different countries all over the world, right? So as we already know that the giant panda is not found in India right uh, we can find them in china right the red panda which are only present in the sikkim region of india right so these are the different geographical distribution of the different plants and animals definitely we can see the polar bear only in the uh, arctic region right so these are the different geographical distribution of the different plants and animals the study of which will come under the biogeography Right now, coming to the next one that is morphology. So, morph matlab form. Okay, morph comes from uh, morph, mi morph means the form. So, the study of all the different forms and the structure from outside of the plants and animals will come under the morphology. Right, like we have uh, one nose, two ears, two eyes, and uh, our structure is like. Uh, we do the bipedal locomotion, we stand on our feet, we have the two hands, we use the hand for eating or doing the different work. So this is our morphology of the living, uh, of the human being, right? So the study of this form and the structure of all the living organism, whether it is a plant or animal, will all come under the morphology. Fine. Now coming to the other branches of zoology, definitely ornithology. Ornitho matla birds. Okay. So the branch of zoology which concern only the study of the birds will come under ornithology. So if you are interested uh, about the bird watching or taking photograph of the birds, there are a lot of uh, scope of taking the photograph. You uh, know already there are many people who do the wildlife photography. Mainly, uh, most of them are like concerned about the birds the various types of birds which are found all over the world and this branch of science which uh, deal with the study of the bird comes under the ornithology 
Now, next one is the herpetology. This is also coming under the uh, another branch of zoology, which is concerned with the study of amphibians and reptiles. Okay, so not only amphibians, it is the study of the amphibians and reptiles, how their structures are, what are their behaviors, how they perform, how they interact with each other, uh, what is their internal structure. These are all coming under, and uh, definitely how they spread the various types of diseases if they bite us. Okay, so these. These will all come under the herpetology. Clear? Eh? Okay. Now coming to the ichthyology, this is again another branch of zoology which concern about the fishes. What are different? Uh, what are uh, whatever the different types of fish which are present in the different aquatic uh, uh, bodies or water bodies, whether it is the freshwater bodies or the ocean, the salt water bodies. So the, these will all come under this ichthyology. Fine. Now, next is the entomology, very important and very interesting. Also, it is the study of the insects and the relationship between the insect and the all over the environment as well as the human being and the other different organisms. So, this study of insect is known as the entomology. So, the st scientists who study uh, the, about this insects are known as entomologists. Like I have also done my specialization in entomology because I love insects. Uh, there are varieties of insects which are present all over the world. You don't know them also uh, and also many of them are not discovered till now. So, this is also very interesting and have a lot of scope of research about the study of the insect and discovering how they are behaving, uh, how they are producing the lights, how they are producing the various types of sounds. So, all will come under the study of the entomology, right? Now, coming to the biochemistry. What is biochemistry? Again, from the uh, name only, you will be able to get the idea that is bio chemistry. Bio means definitely living organism and chemistry means whatever chemical reactions are taking place. So, definitely it will be the study of all the chemical reactions which are taking place within our body or the body of all the living organism, whether it is plants or animals or the microorganisms. Clear? Hai? Next is the genomics. What is genomic? It is the study of the genome, the entire D, uh, DNA sequence of an organism. I, um, I hope that you already know what is DNA, right? It is the genetic, uh, 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 DNA are the uh, deoxyribonucleic acid which carry the genetic information from the parents to the offsprings, right? So, the study of the whole genome, whatever is present in the human being or any other organism will come under the study of the genomics, right? So, this is all about the different branches of biology. Now, we will study why this biology is so important for our life and why we should study biology, okay? So, from many of the students uh, of mine, I come to know that they do not like biology. But when I say the whole detail about the biology, they have a clear concept that yes, we are also included under the biology, right? We are also the living beings. If we don't know what is happening within the body of the living beings or how we are actually have to survive, we also have to survive with the environment, then how we will be able to like uh, survive or we can... Uh, grow the future generation. So, for that we should also know about ourselves and that is coming under the study of the biology. Clear? Hai? So, let us see what are the importance of biology are. First of all, in appreciating the nature, definitely the natural things are also there, uh, only there in the biology. We can see the different living organisms which are present in the nature. We can understand, it helps us to understand the various causes of the diseases okay whatever diseases are there and keeping a person healthy how to treat the different types of diseases so that a person can maintain a proper healthy life right thirdly we will study about uh, in biology we come to know how to conserve the different plants and animals so that the life will go on existing okay so the conservation of the plants and animals are also very important growing of more and more food we know that the population is growing uh, like in a huge rate nowadays so the demand of food the basic needs like the food air and water is also increasing so how to grow more food by uh, increasing or improving the different techniques of the agricultural field is also very important again it will come under the branch of biology 
then making us the conscious citizens and also the awareness of a family planning and reducing the population growth how to do them so if we know about all the different processes like for this uh, the reproductive process how it takes place so we will be able to uh, like make people aware of reducing the population growth otherwise it will be uh, very difficult for us also for surviving in a proper way right so these are coming under the different importances of biology so this is all about today's session let us discuss some of the question answers now let me see who can give me the correct answer over here so first of all who can tell me that who is known as the father of biology just let me see who can tell me the father uh, who is known as the father of biology yes the name of the scientist is aristotle right okay now what is the difference between morphology and anatomy you can get this type of question for two marks in your exam okay so what do you mean uh, what is the difference between morphology and anatomy very good onisha very good it is aristotle now onisha can you tell me what is the difference between morphology and anatomy yes so morphology morph matlab form yes so whatever form or uh, the structure and the form of the living organism whether it is plants or animals will come under the study of morphology and what is anatomy anatomy matlab whatever forms of the structure we study after dissecting one uh, species right on one organism whatever internal structure or the organ uh, structural organization is present within the body will come under the anatomy so this is about the morphology and anatomy morphology means the form and structure from outside of the living organism whether plant or animal and anatomy is the study of the gross structure of the living organism after dissecting it whatever is present within the body clear eh? up to this much okay now you have uh, come to know about a lot about the different branches of biology i must be sure that you have got some of the interest about biology right so what kind of scientist do you think you might be like to be yes think about what interest you have what are the different interests let me see who can give me uh, who will write it down in the chat box what interest here is there in you and what you want to be when you will grow up okay so if you are uh, if you like the volcanoes or like to uh, know about volcano you can be a volcanologist right which is a special type of uh, like a special kind of geologist now if you like the like to study a different types of uh, insects like grasshopper or wasp or, or other different types of insects then you can be a entomology right you can be an entomologist now there are more than a whole world of science since you might have studied things far beyond our earth and we can say that they can be the astronomer so it's totally up to you that what you want to be when you will grow up whatever interest you have in the study please do that go with that interest and you will become famous uh, you will be able to uh, study about this different famous branch of biology okay so let it be up to this much we have already studied a lot about the biology let us uh, like uh, give you a, a very short conclusion what we have studied today we have discussed about the introduction of biology we have studied about the history of biology what was it first called as and how what it it is known as now and do you know like biology is also having another modern name nowadays it is known as life sciences okay in many boards this biology uh, na the name of biology or the term biology is replaced into life science okay so this is also another mo modern uh, study same thing it is also the study of the different life forms and then we have study about the uh scientists and the various discoveries of them then we studied about the different branches of biology a lots and lots of different branches of biology and finally we have discussed about the different importance of biology 
fine so this is all about today's session how is the session i guess you have already uh, understood whatever i conveyed to you i have discussed with you so we will again meet uh, in the next session so thank you for being with us thank you for being with swift learn so if you have not subscribed our channel till now please subscribe our channel and press the bell icon so that you will never miss any of the update of the upcoming sessions so stay with us stay with swift learn and like comment and share with your friends and family members right so we will again meet in the next session okay so till then bye bye take care stay safe